from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is the Cube's continuous coverage of IBM's Think 2020, the digital event experience. My name is Dave Vellante. Many. Das Gupta is here. She's the Vice President of Marketing at IBM. She's also the CMO of the Global Business Services Group. Manny, good to see you. Thanks for coming back on theCUBE. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Dave. Uh, fantastic to be here. You have a lot of experience with brands. IBM itself is just this you know, amazing, well-known uh, leading brand. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on what you're seeing in terms of how brands are responding to the COVID-19 crisis or the things out or there are things out there that you're seeing that are inspiring you and you know, what should we be looking for? Oh my gosh. I mean, all around the last two, two months, we have been living now in a, in, an, in a new reality and this is not going to um, go back to what we knew as normal, right? This is going to be the new normal and how brands react to it sets us up for future growth and future success. You know, as uh, in the global business services team, as the CMO there, I, I meet a lot of clients every single day and they are coming to us with their business challenges. What makes the big difference right now, I think in terms of, of uh, being a successful brand is the resilience and the adaptability. If you see a company like IBM and you talk a little bit about how iconic this brand is, it's been there for about 108, 109 years now, and it has been able to successfully reinvent itself with every turn of the century, you know, every turn of what's happening around us. Uh, it being able to pivot, I think is extremely important. What also is important as a brand is the empathy um, that you can feel towards the growth and success of your client's business, I think sets um, any, any brand apart from growth. So adaptability and empathy, those would be my two big things. I mean, I, I, we talked to a number of CIOs, IBM came out as one of the companies that's really helping. It wasn't just IBM, there were many, many large organizations, small organizations that really had this empathic, we're in this together sort of feeling to it. That's exactly right. If you look at it, it's it's both of what we do for our clients, but also what we do for our own employees. 95% um, of our workforce across IBM is now working from home in a safe and secure environment. We've been able to work with our clients and move those teams that work with our clients also in a more safe and secure environment. For example, something like our co-creation workshop the IBM garage, you would think that for co-creation innovation, you all need to be together in a room and put up sticky uh, notes on, on the board behind you. But we have moved it to be a virtual experience. And we are now offering free trials of a lot of our products and solutions to our clients for the next 90 days where they can get their most pressing business problems solved. And you know, we just want to make sure we get together and get the economy back on track, get the companies back on the track of growth. Now, one of the other passions of yours, I know, is this notion of, of the cognitive business, a smarter business, and, and I want to ask you, help us understand what that is. You know, beyond the sort of marketing taglines, what, what is a smarter business? Yes, a smarter business is adaptive and resilient. So the, that, that would be the biggest things um, that I would highlight. Now, how do they do that? They do that because they are able to have business platforms they use the data that they have at their disposal. And mind you, this is not the um, data that is searchable online. 80% of, of the core customer data is with, with uh, organizations themselves. Now, how do they use that data to create business platforms that give them competitive advantage is one of the core tenets of what makes a smarter business. The second piece is around workflows that are more intelligent. Now, what makes these workflows more intelligent? What are these workflows? These are end-to-end -end processes. So think of supply chain. How do you make your supply chain more resilient in the COVID crisis right now that many, um, many companies are grappling with? How do you strengthen your direct-to-consumer routes? Many companies that used to deliver to stores now are figuring out how to get direct to consumers. So making these work close, more intelligent, more resilient? How do you manage your workforce, right? Um, how do you make sure that the customer data that many um, employees work with is safe and secure? So second big piece is the intelligent workflows. 
And the third thing is all about the experience and being able to engage with your customers in, in, in newer ways. If you think of some specific industries that are dealing with customer claims, you know, you look at the healthcare payer provider industry, you're looking at insurance claims and, and things like that. They are grappling with this new reality and being able to then connect with your customers in new and engaging ways, I think is, is of utmost importance. So the three things, platforms, workflows, experience is what makes a smarter business possible. And that business is adaptive and resilient. Uh, the mm -hmm. way in which brands are engaging it's 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 dramatically different than it was just a few months ago, and and our thinking is there's going to be some permanent changes here. What what are your thoughts in that regard? Absolutely, hundred percent agree. Um, when we go back to work, when we all get out of our home offices, um, it's going to be an, a new way of working, and we're already seeing uh, the engagement within our own workforce rising. For example, I just came off of one of our all hands calls and uh, we create these new videos on how we have new coworkers. We, we have you know, pets and, and kids and, and parents that we have to care for at home. Um, with all of this though, there is a greater sense of togetherness. There is a greater sense of solidarity. And uh, what inspires me the most is when I look at the people around us uh, in the delivery uh, teams, uh, you know, across the world, if you look at India, if you look at Philippines, you know, our big teams that are delivering for clients every single day, the resiliency that they have shown in being able to overcome these, these hurdles are giving us ideas that this is not a one and done. This could actually be the new normal going beyond it. The automation that we have been able to apply, uh, uh, when you apply AI, how do you make processes different? If things are more efficient, wouldn't it be a better idea to have that go throughout to the rest of you know, um, what's the, the new normal around us? So this is absolutely going to change the way we work, the way we engage with our clients, and the kind of um, new ways of and new routes to market. I think that is the most exciting to me. How can we how can we pivot quickly and find out new routes to market, new customers, and be able to provide them value? The Watson Watson Digital Assistant is is interesting to me because it allows, a, as one example, a hospital to be able to put out information that's accurate and timely. These things have to be done in near real time, as we know the the COVID situation it changes daily. Uh, you know, maybe the change is is decelerating a little bit, but it's still several times a week and, and there was a there was a period of time where it was changing multiple times per day so so for instance you know do i wear a mask do i not wear a mask how far do i have to stand away can i can i actually get this by walking behind somebody you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so much information that changed so quickly as the medical community got that so you have to be able to access that data and you know to your point about that that intelligent workflow be able to do that in near real time and and that's what it, it, to me anyway, it's about operationalizing that, that workflow, that, that data, that you know, AI capability across the organization, not just in some stovepipe where I have to ask somebody to you know, run some, some analysis for me. That, that is a huge change in the way in which businesses operate, isn't it? It, it is a huge change. And I think it's also about visibility um, that the common man is right now, the citizens, the, the people who are, who are um, trying to access these technologies, I think it gives them a renewed um, hope um, in what technology could really provide, how we are still being able to work while we are stuck in our homes, how we are still able to buy things online and not jeopardize the safety of our loved ones who, you know, um, uh, who may be immunocompromised, who cannot go out and shop, how we are able to still do the delivery. And, and the beauty of this is we in the technology industry, if, if we, we knew this. So, Go back one year, we were working with um, uh, Chemonix, uh, a company that supplies life-saving medicines to many parts of Africa. The supply chain there and the technology and the intelligence that we had embedded in that workflow made it possible for this human and tech interaction. And I think that is what the beauty of this is the renewed understanding of what technology can do for you and the ability to interact with the technology to make that happen. For example, in Africa, you, you have to sometimes rely on the goodwill of the local villagers when there are floods and the, the paths are run over with water, you have to trigger um, uh, an email or you, know, you have to trigger to your cell phone so that the locals can then punt 
the medicines over, uh, over the flooded plains to the hospitals, the interaction of the human with the technology that is there to help you and make your lives easier is, I think right now there's renewed understanding and acceptance of that. And I think it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for all of us. I mean, it really is the, the uniqueness of IBM, deep industry expertise, knowledge, and yet, you know, tons of R&D and, and technology, you know, galore. Manny, thanks so much for coming back on theCUBE. It's great to see you. Hopefully next time it'll be face-to-face, -face, but I really appreciate your time. Oh, I, I so wish for that. I so I, I do miss the, the live uh, connections, but, you know, technology will uh, take us forward till then, and uh, fantastic to be here. I loved it. Talk soon. Great. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE for the IBM Digital Event Experience for Think 2020. We'll be right back right after this short break.